Once I was in a school and I was in the staff room and a teacher came and she was very, very angry. And she said how stupid the students were in her class because she's been trying to explain something to them. They just can't understand it. She's frustrated, angry. And she's really angry with herself because she doesn't find out how to help them. And I went over and I talked to the teacher and I wanted to know why she thought the children were so stupid. And she told me that she'd been teaching for very many years and she knows really about student ability and that this particular class are very low intelligence. She knows that they are intelligence is 60% inherited and 40% developed. And I tried to explain to this teacher that this idea of intelligence is totally wrong. There is a big political story behind it, which I'll explain later on, but basically we can't measure human intelligence. You can't take the, po the environment of the population and relate that to one individual. It's, it's totally not possible. What psychologists do is they try to find some uh, identical twins, monozygotic twins, they come from the same egg, and then they give them questions. They, give, they don't test the blood, they don't test the DNA. The, the DNA doesn't have intelligence. And they try then that by asking them the questions to find similarities in the ways that they relate to information and dissimilarities. And the dissimilarities are said to be caused by the environment and the similarities by the genes. But we need really to understand that when the twins are growing inside the mother, they are fed by the same information. And when they grow, they are also sharing thoughts and developing the same environment. So you can't really cut it between the environment and the genes. But really, and, and of course, even then, the way that the tests are measured are, 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 are fallible. Intelligence tests and these types of tests, they don't measure aspects of cognitive reasoning, uh, domain logic, uh, causal reasoning, probabilistic or scientific thinking. These aspects are missing, although when we do measure this, we find a very, very different aspect in the population. Then we find out there's about 10% who are far higher abilities than the rest, only 10%. This is caused by their drive, their emotion, their, their need to work hard, that they are propelled by something to, to make them want to make the brain cells work. Regarding neurology, when the, uh, when the embryo is, um, comes about, right after the eggs fertilize, the brain is learning to design itself and it overproduces many, many, many neurons which are later trimmed back by selectivity, how the brain uses them. And this uh, neurons begin by extending the, the dendrites out to create a basic scaffolding, a basic platform so the brain has this part and this part and this part, generally the same for every individual. What then happens is that after the eight weeks and the fetus arrives and the several hemispheres are formed, then the neurons take a different approach. It's, then it's no longer what we call radial networks but tangential networks and tangential networks develop on stimuli and the fetus is receiving a lot of stimuli through the embryonic sac. Sounds, uh, light, noise, all these are driving the, the brain to begin to devise patterns of how to integrate to the environment. And then after the baby is born, this uh, really takes over. And so it's a stimuli that drives these tangential networks so that the infant can learn to relate to the world through their sensitivity with it. And this is really what we come down to, sensitivity. Everything relating to emotion, relating to intelligence is about emotion. Now that brings us to another point, is that school performance has got nothing to do with intelligence. It's to do with language skills and emotion. Language skills to know how to explain your mind, to relate to the mind of others, so you know the words, great flexibility in using them, you can adapt and adopt. And also then how you can present your mind with the story that you tell. And this is based upon your emotional security, how sensitive you are. So if you're calm and happy, you can relate. If you're distracted, and most children are, or bored or whatever, they're not interacting very well. And therefore this information is going in haphazard, they can't relate to it, and therefore they don't know how to explain the mind. And then the teachers think, well, they're not very clever. I spent a lot of my life, almost all my adult life, helping students to learn to be far better than the uh, teachers thought they were. I'm going to show you a video, video right now that I made a couple of months ago, which explains why. Intelligence is not what we think it is. And I go back over 150 years to explain the political design behind this idea that intelligence is inherited and the way that it's used wrongly in education. We just need to realize, as this teacher did, is that to help our students to learn, we have to find some way to connect with them. 
to inspire their human spirit, which psychologists can never measure, to enable them to want to learn, to believe in themselves, to have the stamina to not to give up, to try to learn to do it. And just love, compassion, empathy, kindness, humour, to make the lesson fun and happy. When this teacher was angry with them, the children or the students couldn't interact, they couldn't ask questions because they were nervous and therefore they couldn't relate very well to information. I did help this teacher to be happier and relax and she didn't find that her students were not as stupid as she thought they were. Watch the following video, you'll find it very interesting.